Rust is always ranked as one of the most loved programming languages on GitHub year after year. I wanted to see what all the fun was about, so I decided to make a game using the language. But I didn't make a game in Rust from scratch. I stumbled upon Bevy, a game engine written in Rust. Let's learn about Bevy. Bevy uses the ECS paradigm. ECS is a fancy acronym which stands for Entity, Components, and Systems. What do these words mean? Let's start with a component. Components are Rust structs that have the component trait on them. If you don't know what a struct is, it's a structure, which is how you group related data together. It's almost like a template. Systems are Rust functions that can read the state of our components and perform some desired action. Entities are just unique identifiers. We don't actually create entities ourselves, but when we spawn a component or multiple components together, an ID gets associated with them. Let's get straight to examples. Let's take a zombie in Minecraft. Zombies spawn at night, but once the sun comes up, they catch fire and die. So how would that look in ECS? We can think of the zombie as a bundle of components, maybe a health component, a position component, and a flammable component. One system might handle spawning. When it's nighttime, it spawns these components together, and boom, now we've got an entity that acts like a zombie. Then another system runs during the day. It looks for an entity with a flammable component that's out in the open and starts reducing their health. Finally, a cleanup system checks every entity with a health component, and if it hits zero, it despawns it. All the zombie is, is a collection of components. The behavior comes from systems that act on those components. I recreated Tetris and Bevy, so let me show you how ECS looks in real code. In my project, each Tetris piece is called a tetromino. So I have a tetromino component, and I also have an active component. Whenever I spawn a new piece, I attach both tetromino and active components to it. That's all it takes to create an entity. Then I have a system called gravity. It runs every second and looks for an entity which has both the tetromino and the active component on it. If it finds one, it just moves it down by decreasing its Y position. Now that you've seen how ECS works, let's go a bit deeper into how I actually used it. Whenever I was adding a new feature, I really just thought about three things. One, how should my components be structured? Two, which components should I combine to make an entity? And three, how should I name them so my systems can easily find what they need? The way systems find entities in Bevy is by querying components. If you've ever worked with a database, it's the same idea. You're searching for sets of data that match certain conditions. Let's think of our whole game as a database. Think of each row as an entity and each column as a component. So when we write a system, we're basically querying this database of entities to find the ones that match certain components. Bevy has its own syntax when it comes to querying, but you can see here I'm using the with keyword to say that the tetromino component must also be with an active component. Once the query runs, it gives us a list of matches. Then we loop through it and apply our logic like decreasing the Y position by one. You may have noticed that some components don't hold any data. These act more like labels. The cool part about these label components is that they're reusable. For example, I added a needs redraw tag to both the active tetromino and the next piece whenever they change position. A redraw system would then be constantly looking for that needs redraw label and update their visuals. Another thing to note is that you can add and remove components from your entities. Going back to the active component example, whenever a Tetris piece would spawn, we would add the active component on that entity. Then once it was locked in our Tetris grid, we removed the active component and added it to the next piece. You can create systems all day long, but they will not work until you register them into the game. The two schedules I used to register systems were the startup schedule and the update schedule. When you add a system to the startup schedule, it only runs once at the start of the game. For example, I use it to spawn the camera 2D component since for my use case, I only needed to spawn it once. Systems in the update schedule run every frame. That's where most of my systems went. For example, I had a system called detect bag low. So it was constantly checking every frame is the length of the queue equal to one. We can create components with structs, but we can also create resources with structs. The way I think about resources is just some global piece of data in your game that doesn't really fit with any specific entity. For example, in my game, I made a scoring resource. So anytime lines are cleared, I can just add it to the score. To create a resource, you just make a struct and add the resource trait. Resources don't exist until you insert it into the game, but once they are inserted, you can manipulate the resource however you want. Then to access a resource in a system, you use either res or resmut. Res is for reading the resource. Resmut is for changing the resource in some way. If you don't know, mut is just the mutable keyword, which basically means that you want to mutate or change whatever you are accessing. So in this example, in my detect bag low system, I use res because I just want to read the queue and check if it's running low. I don't need to change anything. However, in my restart queue system, I use resmut because I need to clear the queue. Things got fun when I started adding events. I think of events as a signal that other systems can react to. In Bevy, there are event writers and event readers. The writer is the system that triggers the event. The reader is the system that responds to it. To create an event, you just make a struct and add the event trait. In my Tetris game, I created a game restart event. The simple idea is I wanted the game to restart once a button was pressed. So I had a detect restart game system that listened for the R key. And when that R key was pressed, it used an event writer to send the event. I then had six different systems listening for that event with 
with event readers. Each system handled its own reset logic. The great part about systems is that it's all decoupled. The writer doesn't care who listens. It just broadcasts the event. And all the systems that are listening do whatever they want about that. Also, the one thing you must not forget about events is you also have to register them into your game. Plugins help you modularize your game. At first, my main.rs file was a mess. All my systems, events, and resources for the entire game were jammed into one file. Then I started using plugins and everything got way cleaner. Each plugin handled its own setup. It registers events, adds systems to startup and update schedules, and inserts any needed resources. This also makes it easier to use chaining, which is just a way to make your systems run in the exact order you wrote them in. When I want to add plugins into the game, in my main.rs file, I just add the plugins to this add plugins tuple. And that's it. Everything hooks in automatically. Total, I ended up with six plugins all working together to build the whole Tetris game. I obviously can't explain every single part of Bevy in one video. So here are the three documentations that I used to help me get unstuck whenever I had a problem. First, the getting started guide. I came to this doc when I first started, but also whenever I was having trouble understanding a general Bevy concept. This doesn't cover absolutely everything, but it does cover the fundamentals and it's very short and sweet. I definitely recommend it if you're just starting. The second resource is the Bevy examples. And honestly, this was the most practical one for me. Anytime I had no idea how to do something, I'd come straight here. On the left, you've got all the topics and they're really well organized. Just click on what you need and it shows you working example code plus a live visual demo. Once you do this enough times, you start to understand the pattern and then you can reuse it over and over again. And the last super helpful resource was the Bevy API docs. Bevy has a bunch of built-in structs like timer, transform, material 2D, just to name a couple. Whenever I wanted to understand how something worked, like resetting a timer or changing its mode, I just look it up in the docs. The examples are great to get a surface level understanding, but the API docs let you dig deeper and really understand what these structs do and what types they expect. This also makes it so that the Rust compiler doesn't yell at you every two seconds. All the resources are linked in the description. And if you want to use my project as an example, the link to the GitHub repo will be in the description as well. And if while you open the description, you trip and smack the subscribe button, it's fate. Don't question it. Just let it happen. Okay, bye.